as she waits, trying to catch her breath. The buzzing of wings can be heard again. Two injured Dermatics are on their way to pick a fight. But for now, Hilma stands strong. With Iron Shod staff in hand, she will not be going down so easily. And so with that, we begin our fight. Kia ora, Legionnaires. Rikon here, and welcome back to Cataclysm in a Wood. We are here with Hilma Baron outside of this strange dirt mound. From this mound, a large amount of these winged insects are emerging. Thankfully, though, the two that are flying towards us at the moment, they are ones that were injured by our blunderbuss previously. So we're hopefully going to be able to take them down with one good swing, just like that. There we go, Hilma. Okay, that one's taken off. It will be back, however. Thankfully, the bleeding on our head has stopped. I like that. And we're just going to wait here, trying to catch our breath as this other one flies towards us. Or, or decides not to. Ah, there we go. Let's finish this, eh? Come on. There we are, Hilma. Okay, all right. Let's slow to a walk. We can catch our breath and reload at the same time. Unfortunately, our quarter staff has taken a bit of damage in that fight. Such is life, I suppose. Let's go and reload our blunderbusses. There we go. Both of them reloaded. We'll activate the other back holster. Oh, We've got both of our blunderbusses in. I figured we had dropped one on the ground. Just our pack then. I see. Okay, well, we'll get the pack back on for the moment. And we'll take a moment to eat. We'll just have some pemmican for now. Delicious, lovely, and some cold water too. We're in mild pain at the moment. But we survived against uh, many of these things. I think Hilma did a pretty damn good job all things considered. So, let's activate one of these again. Draw that out. We'll keep the other one stashed away for now. But we're going to be trying to see what we can do with this place. So, where at the moment... Ah, there you are. Gale is to the south still. I think it would be worthwhile us having access to Gale. So, let's go grab her. And we'll try and get a little bit closer to this uh, strange structure. See if we can actually find an entrance to it at all. I think that uh, that's our entrance and we see blood. Oh, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Hmm. <laughs> Don't like this one bit. Uh, is that just open air? No, it isn't. It's a area of wet slick mud and this is a floor made of a pulpy mass covered in sticky wasp saliva hate that paper floor so yeah it looks like the outside of this is this strange dirt wall that smells like rotten milk that's not great but we can see a little bit into this place can't we ah uh, what is that it's a spider a twitching spider a giant mutated spider lying on its back, legs twitching without pause. A translucent slime mixed with its echo seeps from its joints and its chitin is marked by numerous exit wounds. Okay. Can that thing see us right now or is it just ignoring us? It's tracking. It's immobile. So it's like a turret? This is like an organic turret? Don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> how smart are these things? Oh boy. Now remember, we were hearing labored breathing coming from within this place. So that also makes me a little anxious. Um, okay, we can step on this, right? It is just mud. Surely. Okay, it continues down this way. Let's just peek out again. It's just lots of blood that we're seeing everywhere. Mm-hmm. It is, right? Blood, blood splatter. Yep. Uh-huh. Okay. Don't, don't mind me. Don't mind me. That's, that, is that the labored, labored breathing? No, I mean, that's coming from down here. But over here, we have a dermatic midwife. A dermatic grown even larger. Her wings and, and oviposter chewed off by her sisters. She now stands watch in the nest, tending to the unfortunate hosts, dragged home, 
and ensuring that they don't perish before their purpose is fulfilled. I hate this so much. Oh, it's right here as well. That's great. It's faster than us. Is it faster than us if we're running? Let's see. It's slower. Okay. All right, so we'll take a second to steady our aim here because we really want this shot to hit home and it does, hitting pretty hard. It's bleeding badly. We're going to drop that blunderbuss to the ground and we are going to draw out the other blunderbuss like so. Okay, it tried to attack us but it failed. So let's get a good strike in here. Oh, come on, we missed? That's... That's bad. Ah, damn it. Okay, all right. Time to run. I don't know if we can reload this in time. I'm sure as hell gonna try. Stop reloading. No. Dangerously close. Yes, okay. Dropping it. Our back is quite literally against the wall now. We're just gonna start striking at this thing. Okay, it is easier for us to hit. All right. Well, let's go grab our blunderbuss off the floor. We are going to reload that. Grasping gra uh, rather a rasping growl. Hmm. Okay. We're going to reload this other one here. Heavy breathing. I think when we reload, we put it back into its uh, place. Well, we got some larvae there. And oh boy. Motionless deer. Paralyzed, emaciated deer. It spasms. It notices your presence. Terrified eyes darting around the muddy chamber when it fails to stand and flee. I, uh, yep, yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, that's why the spider was just unable to move. These are hosts of a kind. All right. Well, let's go and holster um, our other blunderbuss, because we are going to be drawing out this quarterstaff and taking out this larvae, also taking out the motionless deer. Both of them. And we'll make sure that that deer isn't going to come back to life. Yeah. Ah, oh, there could be people in here, couldn't there? I think that was the labored breathing, though, was coming from that deer. I kind of want to go... Okay. I forgot that we were still running. Okay, we know that we've got a Dermatech down that way. That's good, we know that now. I'm going to go back and take out the spider. Or try to. Sorry about this. It is a kindness. No longer moving. Okay. So, we're going to go back to using a blunderbuss here. Because we want to try and take a good shot at this Dermatic over here. I, I really don't want to miss, though. That's the thing. I don't like that angle. But, yeah. Heavy breathing. Hmm. I almost think it would be better for us to get its attention. Although we might be able to just shoot it from... No, not from down this way. There was nothing else down there. Okay, alright. Ah, there we go. That's a better angle. I think we're probably quite slowed on this mud though. Okay, that 26 is good, but it's not great. Uh, I am going to start to run now though. All right, and instead of swapping, I'm just going to try and see if we can reload. Oh, reload. There we are. Okay, and we're just going to make our way back down here. There it is. It can't see us right now, so we are better at seeing in the dark than it is. It is quite injured. It is bleeding, but I don't think it's going to die from its wounds. Oh, come on. You're kidding me. Ah, oh, there it is. Stop aiming. No, but we are going to need to steady up a little bit more. Change its position. That'll do it. Okay, reloading again. Right, a helpless dog. Oh man. Yeah, a barely living dog, panting in a pool of slime and blood. It lets out a faint whimper. Okay. It's done. keep moving. Actually, can we... Another twitching spider. Okay. Let's just, um, do it like that. Alright. 
Activate the holster again. Keep one of them out. Because we know if we get a good shot, it can really do a number on them. Another motionless deer. Two motionless deer. Okay. Two seems to be enough to do it. Well, one more for that one. And I hope that our staff is going to be able to make it throughout all of this. Uh, no, we want to go activate. That's what we're doing here. Draw it out. And I'm just kind of waiting every so often just to make sure that nothing is going to jump out at us. Okay. I can see a lot more over this way. Hmm. Right, that's a dirt wall, like the outside. Okay. Maybe should have the pick with us. Um, okay, there's definitely more over here. Oh, whoops. That'll be easier. <laughs> well, I say that. They can be quite hard to hit, though. Okay. Just the motionless deer. So far, that's all it is. I think we can go around this corner as well. Okay. No? That's it then. That's all that we can get to in here. At least I'm pretty sure. Well, this is a horrible place. Well and truly. You know what? I think we're going to just burn this down. Um, although in saying that, in saying that, smash it down effortlessly. Let's try that. Do we get anything from smashing it down? Also, we should smash down some other parts just in case there is more to it. Like that. Indeed, there is. Okay. Right. But that stuff is harder for us to tear through. Okay, good to know, though. So, could there be anything else hidden? Yeah, kind of to the north. So we'll head that way. Through there. Oh, that leads to the outside. I see. Ooh, I want to climb on top of this thing. If we can, it would uh, help us just see more of the area. So, that'll be the plan. There's definitely no staircases down from what we can see. Okay, so let's put that away for now. We need to try see if that's going to be possible. We need something to brace against it, huh? I'm just trying to think if there's anything that we could use to do that. Or alternatively, sometimes it's easier to climb when we're actually inside. No, not a chance there. Or, you know, if you have a wall between you, you can kind of shimmy up it, like over here. Is that possible? Yes, it is. Okay. Climb to the south. Right. We are atop this structure now. We can see a lot further because of it. Okay. I immediately see something that is interesting and concerning at the same time. Over here, fungal flowers. Fungal flowers. So that's one way for us to find plant matter is by fighting against that. We've got a great big swamp up here, which is concerning because this, this whole area, this river, is a nightmare. There are so many, so many carnivores in there. We're not seeing any caves. That's what we're here for. We're here for caves. And I don't imagine there's going to be much over this side either. The fungal flowers, that's its own, that, uh, that's, that, that is a problem, definitely. But that's something that we'll look at Later, I think what we're going to do is grab Gale and just kind of continue back on towards the north. Yeah, we're still in a condition in which we can uh, continue without too much trouble. We're going to climb down here. Okay, we didn't slip. That's good. Uh, your carried weight tries to drag you down. See, that's uh, <laughs> that is unfortunate. We are carrying quite a bit. Okay, though. Right. We've got wind going to the east. Um, that's not going to really help us out that much at all today. Do we have everything at the moment? We've got our two blunderbusses. We've got our staff. We're okay. We're in minor pain at the moment, or rather mild pain. I think that's okay for us to continue on with. 
it's not too bad yet. So, to the north we go, and around, and hey, if I see apples along the way, I will try to pick them up. It looks like we've started dropping them though, because, uh, yeah, just our armor is very heavy, and holding onto all this stuff is not so easy. Alright, no apples for now then. Okay, looks like we're starting to hit some swamp here, which is probably connected to this swamp as well. Concerning, alarming, that's a, that's a lot of swamp. Also, let's mark that as explored, soon as we've, we're kind of done with it now. Uh, we're going to go a little bit further to the north, because we do not want to be too close to the swamp. There's bog iron, ah, oh, there's bog iron there. Hmm, we could just extract the bog iron. That is totally a method. Obviously, it is faster. Oh, okay, well, that, that kind of... That, that settles it for me. Going for bog iron is going to be better. But we're not actually going to be able to bring that much back with us. So, yeah. I think what we're going to do for now... It is still morning, so we're going to continue on with the exploration side of things. I think mapping out a little bit more of the map on our last day of autumn is going to be beneficial to us um yeah we just want to give rivers everything else like that a bit of a well we want to give them respect we want to give them space so that we can run away from them very quickly if we need to also we don't need to run we've got gale we do have a forest over there okay let's start to make our way towards that i just don't want to be too close to this river at the moment though i'm not actually seeing any dinos in there so yeah that's okay right uh, we got an Ed fighting a giant wasp, so we might have another wasp pipe around here. I'm not so much a fan of that, but, um, oh, there we go. <laughs> Skeletal. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, there we are. So, we've got lots of these, uh, Issy, which are a large bipedal plant-eating dinosaur. That is a skeletal dromaeosaurid brute. Yeah, distorted outgrowths of calcified bone plates cover this dinosaur's rotting flesh, claws and sharp teeth. Joints and cracks around his body ooze with black goo. Terrible, absolutely terrible. Uh, and then we've got some regular ones there as well. Oh, hang on. That's a small version of them. This might actually be small as well. It just looks, it looks worse than it actually is. Maybe. <laughs> Rightly so, they are fleeing. Um, that's smart. We're going to try and do the same. We're just going to go to the north. And if we need to, we're just going to jump into this cart and go very far away. Right now, though, oh my gosh, is it clay or is it a cave? I can see a sea on the map. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> Not only is it a cave, but there is signs of life there as well. Okay. It's the caves. It's like, it's like each person has been dropped off specifically at a cave. Even Hilma. If we think about where Hilma began, all the way down here, it was this spot here. She was really close to her cave. In fact, I think we could see it right away on the map. I can't remember, but I, I know that we were really, really close to it beginning. It's like we're meant to be close to those things. It's like the Watchers know that we need basic shelter. Were they making it easier for us? Or are they just points where they can be sure that we'll stay in one area? Because we don't need to wonder if we have shelter. Yeah, it's a way to kind of pen us in, maybe. If you think about where the watches are as well, they are to the north of us. There really aren't any other caves that we've discovered by them yet. It would make sense to me that that's their observation station for all these different caves. And even more interesting, we have found empty caves. You know, this one over here, empty. Uh, we've discovered another empty cave as well, right? That's the cave that has folks in it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's got to be. Yes, right, because we discovered the other cave over here, which we've still got some coal at at the moment. Yeah, those two caves completely empty. The other cave that's close to ours, people. Well, not, not this one, but people up at that one. And now we've discovered another person somehow surviving 
by the river. And here's the thing as well. I, I don't know how long they've been surviving here for. I'm doing kind of air quotation marks. They've got a goose nearby. Maybe they've made friends with the goose. Naoma Gary. Let's let go of Gale for now. As Hilma, clad in chitin armor, with two blunderbusses slung over her shoulders, starts to wander towards this person. Okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and what a way to start. Okay, cuck. Hands up. I mean, Hilma's a pacifist. She's going to put her hands up. Yeah, we'll be helpless, sure. Pause to stay still. Any movement may cause Naoma to attack you. What is she going to do? She says, don't move a cursed muscle. Is she going to try and take one of our guns? Let's see. She reaches into our pack and she takes out a piece of pemmican, looking at it in her hand for a second. The pemmican is a lump of rendered fat, smoked meat and berries. If Naoma has been here for a while, I imagine she probably hasn't eaten all that much. Looking at her though, she is mugging us at the moment, yup. She's wearing a tank top, she's got steel toe boots on, a striped shirt, which we've seen before on Prisoners. She has a pemmican and a police duty belt, which leads me to believe that she did indeed come from a prison. However, she was probably a prisoner, not unlike one JC Cruz. She is wielding a throwing knife. And thinking about our law here as well, all the people that Helmet has encountered, they have had the things on them that they had when they were brought here. Hilma, however, was different, and I think the reason that she was different was because when she was taken, she was charging towards those Migos at high speed on the back of a horse. So either they saw her as a threat, or saw that they needed to be some kind of balance. Either way, it's all an interesting thought. For now, though, we are just going to stay still. She takes our sewing kit. Come on, Naoma. Our screwdriver set. And we can hear a noise. There is a noise from inside here. Footsteps. She's not the only one, I think. She takes our clean water. She's taken our screwdriver set, our sewing kit, our charcoal, our torch, our carving knife, our ankle sheath. Are you taking everything from us here? Our candle, our socks. She's taking our socks off of us. And then she gets scared, and now she's fleeing. Is it because Hilma's just standing here with this alien-looking armor on? And also, think about it this way, Naoma took her socks off without taking the boots, so I'm guessing she just kind of tore them away. I mean, she did grab the ankle sheath at the same time, so maybe she just kind of cut them away. Oh, no, you didn't. I think she must have just gotten freaked out seeing Hilma just standing there, just accepting her taking all of her things. She lashes out at us, <laughs> screaming, You have it coming! And then continues, Motherfucking! Die, you cuck! I want to live! Okay, Naoma. We'll let her strike again. And now she draws blood. All right, then. That's how it is. If we turn and run now, she may very well kill us. Hilma, you gotta do what you gotta do. Reaching behind her, with a fair bit of speed, she draws out her blunderbuss and grits her teeth. We've given her time, but time no more. Pulling back on the trigger, Naoma hits the floor. We lost the conduct. Merciful. Our ears ring. Blood spilled across the grass. And the first ever human Hilma has killed dies by her hand. Let's check in very quickly on not the goose. Not the goose. Come on. On a morale. Our morale is okay. It didn't shake her because we were being attacked. I think that's probably why. 
We take that moment though, as our ears are ringing, and we can hear movement inside. There are definitely other people here. Blood drips from our left leg. Let's reload this thing. We hear footsteps again. We ignore them. Let's activate the holster. Put that slug thrower back on, and we're just going to try and stop this blood. We try to press down on it, but these gauntlets, they do not make it easy. We can take them off. Get them off our hands. Start to press down more. We've stopped it. The gauntlets, let's put them back on. And we're going to put back on our clothing. The socks, the sheath, and you've got our stuff. And I think you've probably got it on these here. Nine hidden items. And they're also hidden as well. Oh, we can look into them here. Right, so that was our charcoal. That's our sealed stomach. That's a lot of our stuff. What did she have on her duty belt, though? <sighs> okay, as Hilma cautiously opens up the various different pouches on this belt, we see a sealed can. It's a chocolate drink. We see our candle, the carving knife, a lighter, a bag with granola in it, a very interesting magazine, and our screwdriver set. There's also a bottle containing nicotine liquid. We are only going to take our own things back from this. So we're going to take the pemmican, uh, although it's saying we can't currently. So we're going to take a moment here to make sure that we actually can take all of our things back. So for whatever reason, we seem to be struggling with carrying all of our stuff right now. I think it's because of our strength more than anything. Um, these are our items that I've just moved off towards the side here. I could start manually storing things in some of our belts and whatnot. Okay, yeah, we just manually insert things into our pack, but we managed it in the end. So now we have a, a body of someone on the ground here, and they very well may come back to life, <sighs> which we can't, we can't. You're going to have to, before we do anything else, we're going to go into here. We can hear that there is indeed someone else or something else here. Naoma wasn't alone. If it's anything like the other cave, there could be other people here. Maybe they were being kept here by Naoma. It's hard to know. But we got to find out, right? Let's brush aside the cobwebs. There's someone, definitely someone in here. Not a someone, a something. There is a black bear here. Right. Fiercely protective of the cubs. Okay, we're going to keep that in mind. Huh. No way down yet. Nope, not from what you can see. Okay. They must be past this black bear, right? Hey... Let's, um, just in case, just in case, we're going to draw out the blunderbuss. I want to try and see if we can just step around it. Right now, it is, uh, it's fleeing. Okay, I'm all right with that. There is a way down. So down we go. All right, we are going to light that torch. We can see a lot better now. And there are resources here. Naoma, you didn't know what you had. What you could do with what you have here. This is exactly what we needed. But we had to kill for it. This is the same type of basement. And this is the thing. I imagine that there is a moment here now for Hilma. I think Hilma has... She does have a good memory. So, looking at the layout of the second level of this cave... It is alarmingly similar to her own cave. Every wall, every angle is identical. Are the number of resources here identical? It's hard to know, but you know, extinguishing this torch, there is the exact same ray of light 
not exactly in the centre, but where her ray of light is. Except this cave is flipped. The entrance is at the north rather than the south. This is the same basement, the same cellar as her own. Almost as though it was constructed for a purpose for this test. Oh boy. We got what we wanted. But Hilma had to kill. I am still surprised that we don't have a negative to our morale there. But I think Hilma tried. She stood there. I don't know how much she would have let Naoma just take from her. But surely Hilma was the first human that Naoma would have seen since arriving in this place. I do, I do imagine that she was probably looking very, very thin. If she'd just been surviving off the berries and hell, maybe even the cubs of that black bear up there. That might have been enough for her to survive the last winter. But now, that's when desperation sets in. Okay, well, we've got resources here that we do need to process. So I'm going to gather everything together and then figure out exactly what we're going to need. And then we're going to have to devise a way in which we are going to be able to haul all of that back. And I will most certainly be climbing on top of this cave before we leave it. Now I'm also thinking we're going to have to dig a grave. We don't really have the tools to do that, but we can try. We can do something. There's a lot of rocks here. We can probably just, you know, pile the rocks up and bury Naoma under that. Yeah, okay. It's time to get sorting. After going through everything that we got from this here, it was mostly casserite, which is going to be tin. We've got five chunks of galena as lead. For our hematite here, we've got six chunks of that, so that's going to give us our lumps of steel. We've got our native aluminium, our native copper, we've got some gold, and we even got some sulfur out of that as well. We've got some more coal, which we're probably going to be bringing back with us, and we've got these iron ores that we're going to be doing the same with. So, let's extinguish this torch for now and clamber back up to the top. Yeah, we're going to have to um, haul this past the bear. And I think it's probably gone outside. By the sounds of things, yep, I hope she wasn't your friend. I really do. Yeah. Well, at the very least, we're going to need to make sure that she doesn't um, come back. Yeah, so while we are going to bury her, we need to make sure that we not dissect, dismember. It'll only take 42 seconds. See, here's the thing. Smashing a corpse, that's one thing, right? And I feel like that's a way to almost cheat this. I think Hilma will feel terrible about this, and I think that is right that we do feel horrible about it. Uh, although... Did I, I might have actually misstepped there. That was meant to be dismember. I feel like that was a little bit more than dismembering. But it has had the desired mechanical effect that I was after, which is, yeah, anguish. Which even though we killed in self-defense, having to make sure that that body doesn't come back when it clearly isn't a zombie, is something that's going to stick with Hilma. We're going to put our blunderbuss back away, as this bear seems friendly. Now I'm kind of wishing I could tame this bear. No, we're not gonna. No, no. That is not something Hilma would do. I was thinking for a moment there about the, the, the flesh. No, nope, nope. We're just gonna haul these large rocks up on out of here. And that is what we're going to use to cover her remains. Like so. Okay. Well, we're going to leave those resources there just for a moment. I would very much like to try and climb here. And it looks like we might need to try and climb. Actually, that might work. Nope. What about here? Is that going to work? Also, same deal. Well, let's try inside then. See if we have any better luck with that. Like over that spot. Can't climb there either, huh? Okay, we will be able to find somewhere around here, I imagine. I just find it surprising that we could brace at that other location. Uh, we've got a tree here as well that might help us out. We just need to actually try and find a way around. Let's see. 
No. No luck there either. Well, I'm going to go around and see if we get any joy. Because there are a few spots here where I imagine we should be able to climb up. Yet we cannot. Yep, nope. Not a chance, seemingly. Well, that's, uh, that's disappointing. I would really like to get a better sight of the area. I'm just trying to think if there are any quick ways in which we might be able to do that. A log stool might be enough. We just need a single log to do it, though. <clears throat> we have our wood saw. Ideally, okay, right. I have spotted a log that's already downed, or rather a tree that's already downed. Okay, and... Okay, a dinosaur body. Interesting. Let's just go and uh, chop this into logs. Woodland white spotted. Yeah, we're going to stop for a moment. Has it seen us? Okay, it has. Well, we're going to have to deal with you. Let's draw out our staff. Oh boy, there's two of them. Okay, there's three of them. There's four of them. Okay. Oh boy. Yep. The St. Bambi. But there's a lot of them. We are just spitting. Oh no. Okay. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Skeletal theropod juggernaut. That's probably as bad as it sounds. Yup. No wonder Naoma was staying in that cave. This hideous colossus of plated bones and misshapen flesh drags its heavy pointed limbs behind it. Already strong and dangerous, bones grew around its form to protect it, only they kept growing. The shape and twisted clawed arms suggest some kind of two-legged dinosaur. Okay. It's a colossus, so it's massive. Right. We need to go, and we need to go now. We can come back for these resources, but we cannot do it while there is something that big here. The breeze is going to the east. We need to get to Gale. Where exactly is Gale? To the north and to the east a little bit here. These things might be able to chase us down, but we need to start running. How much faster than the sauropod are we? Not the sauropod. The theropod. It is slower than us at this stage. Okay. Well, we need to go with that. And the these woodland whites, they're going to be able to chase us. Oh boy. Oh boy. We need to turn Gale around. Oh, not like this. Come on. <sighs> okay. We're in the seat. Gale, go. And go now, Gale. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there, it is rare that there are these moments in Cataclysm where it is just cinematic. Absolutely cinematic. That was one of those moments. We're going to slow this thing down slightly as we try and take out this hopping deer that's chasing after us. And as we kill it, <laughs> we're going to leave that big thing in the dust. Let's stop for a second. Let's breathe deeply, Hilma. Our quarterstaff is pretty much broken at this stage. It is uh, badly bent. What an episode. What a bloody episode. But we're alive. After all of it. We're alive after being mugged. After having our first confrontation with another person. And after running into something like, uh, well, that big lad back there. <sighs> Gale, you saved our life. Oh boy, Legionnaires, if you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. <laughs> what a time. What a time, Hilma. Well, we're going to have to go back to get those resources at some point. And believe it or not, it is still morning. There is still more of this day left. As to how we go about that, 
Well, we might be able to test out just how good those blunderbusses are against something that big. But it's a risk, as ever. Please join me in the next. For now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned. And finally, I'd like to extend a great big thank you to the Legion on Patreon, who continue to make this wildly cataclysmic content possible.